Hey guys, this is Undercover Dudes all the way from Down Under, and today I have the top 5 new free to play games on Steam. These are 5 games that have just come out in the last couple months that you probably don't know about. There's also quite a few games I left off this list, so if you want another top 5 with more awesome free to play games, then let's get this video to 6,000 likes and I'll 100% start working on it. Now starting out as sort of a bonus game that I quickly want to talk about is Aim Lab. It's basically a first person shooter aim trainer which makes you aim better and faster. While technically this game did come out last year, I still wanted to include it as it's getting very regular updates and tons of support which is awesome. And on top of that, I've never mentioned this game on my channel before, so hey, there we go. Now before we get into the number 4 spot, I want to quickly talk about the sponsor for today's video, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid is a free to play RPG game that you can play on the mobile, so hey, we've got another free to play game that you guys can check out. Raid is jam packed with features you would expect from a brand new RPG game, sweet graphics, epic boss fights and tons of champions to collect and customise. Now for me the best part is I can hop on for like 5 minutes when I'm going to the bathroom, clear out a dungeon and then hop off, or play for even longer when I'm going to university on the train. The game is also quick to load and easy to run with no lag which is absolutely perfect with my not so good mobile phone. With all of this said, Raid Shadow Legends has a 4.5 star rating with over 300,000 reviews so hey they're gonna be doing something right. The game is also growing super fast and the highly anticipated Fraction Wars feature is now live. Along with that, there is a new rewards program for new players where you can get a daily login reward for the first 90 days of the game. So what are you waiting for? Go to the video description, click on the special links and you get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new play program to start your journey. Now with that said guys, let's get right into this top 5 list, starting out with the number 5 spot, Neon Boost. Now Neon Boost isn't your typical first person shooter, not only for its art style, but also its gameplay. Graphics wise, the game is covered in neon from head to toe, bathing every level in an 80s aesthetic that is backed up by a banging synthwave soundtrack. In terms of gameplay, it's simple in concept, but complex in execution. The idea is that using classic movement techniques like rocket jumping and wall running, you traverse through the levels in an attempt to get the best time. As you can probably tell, this game is very much made for speedrunners and that's awesome, with a timer up top telling you exactly how fast you are. Now the game has 36 standard levels across 3 different worlds, Laser City, Tesla World and Cosmic Highway. However, with the alternate mode called Lights Off, you basically get an extra 36 maps as the game is completely different in this mode. In Lights Off, your visibility is significantly reduced, introducing an extra element you have to handle, which means that even when you think you've mastered the main game, you have to go master this as well. Overall, Neon Boost is a fast and frantic game, perfect for people who want those top times like speedrunners, but even if you're not a speedrunner, that 80s aesthetic, the rocket jumping, the wall running, very very sick indeed, so go and check it out. Planetside Arena, the battery hour offshoot of Planetside 2, is now finally released on Steam and in the free to play section, after backing away from its initial pay to play model and being delayed continuously. Now the question on everyone's mind is, was it worth the wait? And I believe it was. Plantside Arena is definitely a familiar Battery Hour title, but with twists that really makes sense. Like most Battery Hour titles out there, you hop in with a squad, drop in on the map and loot up, being pushed in by the enclosing circle. However, that's where the similarities end, as the way Plantside Arena does it is very different. Instead of squads of 4, you have squads of 12, and instead of having no loot, you spawn in as one of 3 classes, Engineer, Medic or Assault, and you actually have all your weapons and abilities from the start. The difference in Planetside Arena is the fact you already have your weapons, but loot still upgrades your weapons and gear, making you more powerful, but that whole you already have your weapons and abilities is a cool twist as getting killed with no loot is very, very annoying. What is also very annoying in Battery Hour games is slowly moving around the map. However here, if you press the X button, you spawn your own hover bike, meaning you're never really stranded from the rest of your team. And on top of that, Planetside Universe, vehicles are a very very big part and in Planetside Arena, you can spawn in Vanguard tanks, you can spawn in ATVs, and having these big battles with these massive vehicles is a really really big part of this game. 
In terms of combat, it feels similar to Planet Side 2. However, the default camera position of third person mixes things up a bit, but it works quite well. Overall, Plant Side Arena is a pretty fun game, but I'm left feeling it could have just been an extra mode in Plant Side 2, given how similar the games look, how it feels, how it plays, very much using those Plant Side 2 assets, but in a Battle Hour title. The next game I want to talk about is the first person puzzle platforming game called Gravitas. Now, from first impressions, you would automatically think this is Portal. And honestly, you're not too far off. But with that said, Gravitas does things differently. Rather than putting portals and then launching things through, you have these gravity streams which you can move yourself and you can move objects to manipulate the map and to go and solve these puzzles. The story is quite simple. You arrive at the Gallery of Refined Gravity, otherwise known as the Gorg, and you meet the Gallery's curator, who stays by your side as you complete the game's increasingly difficult levels. Given that you, the pupil, have no voice lines, it would be a little bit lonely, but the curator's cutesy AI she perfectly contrasts with the curator, with both of them having clever dialogue and top-notch voice acting, and this comes out as one of the game's best elements, having this banter in the background while you do these puzzles, it's a really cool thing. Each level has its own little story that has been shaped by the curator, and it all adds up to the atmosphere that surrounds you when you solve the game's puzzles. Talking about the puzzles, the main element of the game, while they may not be as complex as Portal, they still make you think and every few levels or so a new element will be thrown into the mix just to mix things up. But rarely did I feel like the levels were being repeated. Each level felt unique and challenged me to think in different ways, which was very cool. Now the most apparent downside to this game is that the runtime is quite low as it only lasts for about an hour, but it's still a fantastic hour nevertheless. Now if you haven't played Portal yet and you want a taste of the first person puzzle platforming experience then this is a great great introductory experience but if you're a hardcore Portal fan as well and you want something that is quite different but a little bit familiar then go and check it out as well. Overall just I highly suggest checking Gravitas out. The easiest way to explain Rise of Legions is that this game is a mixture of MOBA, tower defense and deck building with a hint of tug of war from Starcraft. While seemingly simple on the surface, Rise of Legions has a great amount of depth and is perfect for someone who wants to try out the strategy genre. The aim of the game is simple, destroy the enemy base. How do you do that? By spawning units and overwhelming your opponent. You can spawn units automatically via spawners or drop them directly onto the battlefield. Each method uses its respective resource, spawners use essence while casting uses mana, and it's a matter of balancing the two so you're efficient. While Rise of Legions has got the DNA of something like Bloon's Tower Defense in a way, Rise of Legions feels much more than that. It feels much more like a full fledged strategy game. More along the lines of, let's say, a streamlined StarCraft that is much more accessible to someone that hasn't really played a strategy game before. It didn't take me too long to pick up and I mostly play first person shooters, but with the deck building and unit spawn timings there is obviously a lot of depth and a ton of strategies. Add on that there's 4 different legions, 1v1, 2v2 and cult missions along with PvE challenges and Rise of Legions is definitely feature packed. I haven't even mentioned the graphics which is clean and simple with cute little in-game characters. The UI also works really well inside the game and out. If you're not in the match the game defaults to a window rather than full screen, i.e. like League of Legends, and it just makes things so much nicer as I don't have to alt tab out. Now overall, if you're not the biggest fan of strategy, be it that if you don't know how to play the strategy genre like I do or you simply don't like it, I do go and suggest check out Rise of Legions because it will definitely shake up your view of the genre. But for people that do like strategy, go and check this out because there is a ton of depth, you just have to go and get really really into it and it seems like a nice little quick little short, you know, 5 to 10 minute matches rather than the bigger ones you might see in other strategy games. Overall, it's a nice compact format, I absolutely love it. Now for today's bonus game, we have Under What. Underwater is a very short game about a fishman being pulled into the ocean and lands in this fish-like utopia civilization. It's less of a game and more of an art piece, and damn it looks beautiful. I won't show much because of spoilers, but the game takes like less than 10 minutes to go and beat, so go and check it out. 
Also, if you're really liking this video and you want to see more top fives and top tens on free to play games, make sure to go and subscribe. Only 12.2% of you have subscribed to the channel and overall, I would love to see more of you guys in this community. I'm going to be uploading more lists so you guys know exactly what the best free to play games are to play. And of course, a very special thanks to today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, for making this video possible. Make sure to go and click those download links below. It helps me out a ton, and you guys get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion. So hey, that is pretty cool indeed. But with that said, let's get right into the number one spot. Coming in at the number one spot, we have the most highly anticipated free-to-play release of this year, and that's Destiny 2. The looter RPG MMO FPS is now finally on Steam and free-to-play, after Bungie split from Blizzard and got their game off that not-so-good launcher. While Destiny 2 had a rocky release, it's been nurtured and kept up to date. And with this free-to-play launch comes a massive DLC release called Shadowkeep. However, that is only for people that pay. But don't worry guys, because the first year's worth of content will be included in the free to play edition and that is more than enough to go and keep you busy, there is just so much content in that package. Now Warframe has been the king of the looters on Steam, but it seems like Destiny 2 is here to take that crown. Now given that the game will only be out a few days after recording this video, I'm not 100% sure how this battle will go, but tell me in the comment section below what you think I'd love to go and get a discussion which one's better, Destiny 2 or Warframe, go and tell me. But with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to go and smash that like button and subscribe for more top 10 lists. Barbanats, undercover dudes, all the way from down under, out.